So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the digestive system. And so I want you to take a minute and maybe you want to look at this diagram to get, get some ideas, but what is the role of the digestive system? And by the way, we're going to be looking at the human digestive system this year. Next year, if you're taking grade 11 biology, you're going to be learning about the digestive systems of a variety of organisms. So I'm hoping what came to mind is that the role of the digestive system is, of course, to take in food. But what do we do with that food? Well, we digest it. And by digesting, and we're going to get to this, we're going to be breaking it down for its nutrients and absorbing those nutrients. And lastly, one of the roles of the digestive system is to eventually excrete any waste material. Now, we're going to get to this, but I want you to do some thinking before we get there. Okay, the digestive tract, we say that the digestive system is comprised of the digestive tract as well as some accessory organs. So I want you to think for a minute, what might be the difference between the digestive tract, what do we mean by that, versus the accessory organs, right? What is the difference there? Okay. So I'm hoping that you've been able to find this diagram somewhere in the, in the week plan and you've been able to print it off or you have it handy at least. Um, so, and you've had time to think about the digestive tract versus accessory organs. So the digestive tract is basically the long tube that starts here and moves all the way through in one tube through your body. The accessory organs are not really a part of this. So the tube itself is what we call the digestive tract, but the accessory organs are all of the pieces that are involved in digestion that are not a part of that tube, okay? That are not connected to that tube. <coughs> what I'd like you to do is to pause the video, video and see if there are any components of the human digestive system that you're able to label. And then when you're ready, we'll come back and talk about them. So I'm going to start where food enters um, your body, which is at the mouth, but in science we're going to use a fancy word. We're going to call the mouth the oral cavity. Okay, oral cavity. Uh, so from there, food is going to move from the oral cavity down to this area right here, which I'm hoping you recognize as being the esophagus. Okay, so the esophagus, food moves down here and into this J-shaped J structure called the stomach. Right? And so from there, our food is going to get churned up and broken down. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. And then it moves into this orange structure, uh, uh, which is called the small intestine. But before there, we have this accessory organ right here, which is the pancreas. And the pancreas has a role uh, of controlling uh, blood sugar, sugar, amongst other things, and involved in digestion. So your food, but it's not connected to that digestive tract. So food is coming into the stomach, moving into this orange structure here called the small intestine. And so from there, this is, this is the way that food is moving doo -doo -doo, all throughout the small intestine. Of course, we've made it a lot shorter in this diagram than it actually is, but we'll get to that. Okay, and then from there it moves into this green structure, which it's not actually green, it's just green in the diagram for, for distinction, which is called the large intestine. So food is going to move upward, it's the ascending colon, across here, um, the transverse colon, and then the descending colon. That's the large intestine. We haven't labeled it on here, but here we have the rectum and the anus. We won't be talking too much about those this year. Uh, but along the way, one thing we should mention is that, um, you know, as food is moving from the stomach to the small intestine, there's going to be some, uh, some materials input. You can see like a duct here from the gallbladder. And the gall, so the gallbladder, the pancreas, and this last structure, which I hope you identified as the liver, are all what we call accessory organs. So we're going to color those in blue just to make sure you remember that they are not part of the digestive tract itself, but they are accessory organs uh, that are critical to proper digestion. So, um, yeah, I'd love to know how you did with that, if you were able to label most of them, which structures you maybe struggled with or weren't sure of, um, 
Uh, but I think most of us, just because of um, our living in this world, have some knowledge of the digestive system, which is great. Okay, so now to more detail. Now, when we talk about the oral cavity or the mouth, I want you to think about, well, what is the function? What is actually going on in the mouth when we take food into our body? Well, I'm hoping you recognize that the role of, of the oral cavity is to initially break down food. It's the initial location where food is being broken down. But it's broken down in a couple of ways. It's broken down mechanically. So we have our teeth that will rip apart food or grind food. We have our tongue that's there to also kind of roll that food into a nice compact ball before we swallow it. But we also have chemicals in our saliva. Okay, Enzymes are special chemicals that help to facilitate the breakdown of food. So food is actually being broken down not only just physically, mechanically, but it's also chemically being broken down in our mouth because of some of the enzymes that are in our saliva. Okay, the esophagus. So the esophagus, we know that food moves from our oral cavity down to the esophagus. And so essentially, what is it? It's a tube. It's a tube that basically connects our oral cavity to our stomach. And it does that because it's able to move food down. And in fact, you know, it's not just because of gravity that our food is moving down. There are actually muscles in there that are contracting and pushing that food down. You'll get into a lot more detail about that in grade 11. Okay, so those muscles are going to contract and relax so that food is moved along and down into the stomach. So that even if you were standing on your head and you swallowed something, that food would make its way from your mouth to your stomach. Uh, through the esophagus. That process is called peristalsis. Okay, the stomach. So food has arrived from the esophagus into your stomach. Let's take a look at the structure of the stomach. Now again, I mentioned that it's a J-shaped organ, but what do we notice about it? Well, you know, it has some epithelial tissue on the surface covering it, right? Um, we have some cells in here that are going to produce some enzymes that are going to help with digestion. Uh, the biggest part I'm hoping you're recognizing is that it's got this muscle layer, right? And so that muscle layer is going to help with some churning. Now, next year, you'll talk a little bit more about how that stomach can expand. You can see it kind of has ridges here, and it can expand to accommodate larger amounts of food, um, particularly after a meal, uh, while food is being churned and or stored. Okay, so it's a super muscular organ. Uh, and it's going to be holding that food, it's going to be churning that food, and that we call mechanical digestion because it's not breaking down the food using chemicals, it's just breaking it down by using mechanical means. Okay, but also in our stomach, we have special enzymes, um, and we also have hydrochloric acid that are going to chemically break down food. Okay, acids we know are powerful corrosive chemicals right, that will break down our food, and that's happening in our stomach. And if you've ever had the unfortunate of vomiting, then you know from your vomit that it has a very sort of sour taste, uh, and that's uh, largely due to the acidic content of your stomach. Okay, but the details of these uh, enzymes and acid um, are also something that we'll expand on in grade 11. Okay, now also, uh, you may have read somewhere that you should eat really slowly, and by eating slowly, really break, you know, chewing your food, and then before swallowing it, by eating slowly, that allows your uh, nervous system to recognize fullness. I want to say, and don't quote me on this, that it's about 20 minutes, right? So if you eat more slowly, then you're, you have, uh, your nervous system um, has more of an opportunity to recognize that your stomach is full, and then you will stop eating and that will prevent some overeating. If you've ever overeaten, you know that's not a super pleasant way to feel. Okay, small intestine. So food moves from the stomach, here's the stomach in shadow here, to this organ here called the small intestine. Um, and so the small intestine is about six meters long. So your foot is probably about like your your actual foot is probably about close to 12 inches, which is, an, uh, you know, the definition of a foot in the imperial system. And um, each meter is about three feet, like not really. But if you wanted to do a rust, rough estimate, right, 
um, you know, three times six, so three feet in one meter times six meters is going to give you 18 feet. So if you stepped in front of your, like if you did a few steps and you counted 18 steps from the starting point, that would be how long your small intestine is, which is crazy. So you might be wondering, well, why is it called the small intestine if it's so long? Well, the small part of that refers to the diameter. And you'll notice that the diameter of the small intestine is smaller than that of the large intestine. The diameter is much larger for the large intestine. Okay, so the job of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients from food. At this point, most of the breakdown has happened. So at this point, you're taking in any of the uh, smaller molecules that now exist from the breakdown in the stomach. Those are being um, absorbed through the walls of your small intestine and into your circulatory system. Okay, so just to show you how food is moving, because it's hard to see with all these overlapping organ systems, here what you can see is food, that yellow food piece moving from the stomach, being broken down and moving into the small intestine. Okay, next year you'll learn about the subdivisions of the small intestine in greater detail. <clears throat> now, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a cross section of the human intestinal tract. So I want you to take a look at it. Now, food has to be pushed through the small intestine. So it should make sense or seem reasonable to you that what we have here is a fairly thick muscular layer. Okay, that's going to help with that. It's going to contract to allow the food to move through it. But also take a close look at these little hill-like structures. Right? It almost looks like a porcupine of some description. Those are called villi. And the villi are like these hill-like structures that are meant to increase surface area. So I want you to imagine that this is almost like a paper that you've crumpled up to create these little hills, right? Or like corrugated cardboard, for instance. If you were to take this and stretch it all out, it would actually cover a lot more area. So the fact that we have villi is a way to kind of create this nice compact surface for nutrient absorption. Okay, so it also contains, you know, the inside of the intestinal tract contains what we call goblet cells. Okay, and they're creating mucus that's basically going to coat, it's going to also lubricate the inside of your intestine to allow material to move through with minimal friction. Okay, I like to think of it as like, what is a goblet? A goblet is like a drinking vessel of sorts, right? And so what do drinks do? They lubricate you, right? So they, um, so a goblet cell has the function of lubricating and protecting that digestive tract. Uh, okay, and again, the villi are those like sort of cone-like structures, and their job is to increase the surface area of, um, of that digestive tract to maximize nutrient absorption in food. Uh, okay, next we have the large intestine. So the large intestine, um, you know, that is where food moves after passing through the small intestine the, in this direction here. What is going on in the large intestine? Well, we've broken down our food. We've absorbed the nutrients. What's left to do? Well, you know, what we have to do next is we have to absorb a lot of the water back into our body. Now, I want to remind you that the small intestine was six meters in length, but our large intestine is about one and a half meters in length. And this is like an average of people, right? Obviously, there are like variations amongst human beings uh, within reason, um, right? So, you know, uh, one and a half meters. So if one meter is three feet, right, we're looking at like, you know, uh, you know, another four and a half feet here. Um, <clears throat> No, no, that's wrong. No, that's actually right. It's just early in the morning. So at this point, uh, we have a total of 18 plus 4.5. So, you know, that's the total length of your intestinal tract in the small intestine and large intestine. Um, so, yeah, again, as I mentioned, you know, in this part of the uh, digestive system, we're going to be absorbing water from uh, indigestible food um, and getting ready to expel anything that is waste material. Um, okay, so now just to show you food moving through, food moved from the stomach to the small intestine, and it arrives at this location here, and then food moves into the large intestine. And then over here, we have the rectum and the anus. 
Okay, now we're going to get to the accessory organs. And so we've talked about the um, structures within the digestive tract. Now let's get to the function of each of the accessory organs that we're discussing today. So the liver is this large organ that's adjacent to the stomach. Uh, and its job, you know, in terms of what we're going to talk about with respect to digestion is that it creates bile. And what the job is of bile is to emulsify fat. It's going to be breaking down fat into smaller little pieces. Uh, and that's going to start the process of digestion there. That's its job, essentially. Um, the gallbladder, you can also see, is adjacent to the liver and kind of tucked underneath, right? Um, and if we had done the frog dissection, you would have probably seen this. Um, and when and if you are taking grade 11 biology and you dissect uh, the fetal pig, you'll definitely see the liver. It's a prominent organ and you'll see the gallbladder just kind of tucked underneath as well. A bit of a green sac. Uh, and so, you know, you can see here there's a green duct leading from the liver into the gallbladder. Okay. And you can also see that there's a um, a connection here. It's like a, almost like a fork in the road where the the gallbladder also connects into this upper part of the small intestine, right? This upper part of the small intestine. So the liver is making the bile and if there's excess bile, the bile is going to go and get stored in the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is storing bile and is going to inject it into that upper part of the small intestine. That's its job. Okay, so let's revisit that again. The liver is here, the gallbladder is kind of tucked underneath, injecting into the small intestine. Another or accessory organ that's also injecting into the small intestine is the pancreas. So the pancreas sometimes kind of looks like creamed corn of sorts, right? And it's tucked in sort of by the stomach. Its job is to secrete insulin. And what does insulin do? It is going to be controlling your blood sugar levels. And in grade 12, when we talk about the endocrine system, which is your hormones, we're going to talk about what, how exactly it does that. Um, and uh, I'll, in addition, I should mention that uh, the pancreas secretes pancreatic uh, amylase, which is an enzyme that helps to break down sugar um, right in, in, for, in uh, a little bit further. And uh, maybe your grade 11 teacher will give you a little story about uh, pancreatic amylase. So that is it for digestion at the grade 10 level. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or you need points of clarification, please reach out. I'm happy to help via our Zoom meeting.